Private fusion research company Tokamak Energy have just broken the world record for the hottest temperature ever achieved in a spherical tokamak and the hottest temperature ever achieved in any privately funded tokamak. But what role do these private companies actually play in the future of fusion energy? Hi, my name's Leah and welcome to Leah Loves Science, why I answer niche, but necessary, science questions. Tokamak Energy is a privately funded fusion research company in Oxfordshire in the UK. They're researching how to build compact, commercially viable fusion reactors for future clean energy fusion power plants. Specifically, they're looking into something called spherical tokamaks. A traditional tokamak is a specific kind of fusion device. It is essentially a large chamber shaped like a donut called the torus, which literally means donut shaped, surrounded by a series of electromagnets. When we run a traditional tokamak, we pump this chamber, this torus, full of fusion fuel, usually hydrogen gas, and then we heat it to extremely high temperatures. We're talking millions of degrees, hotter than the center of the sun. When this happens, this fusion fuel becomes a superheated gas or a plasma. When our fusion fuel becomes a plasma, we turn on our electromagnets and it allows us to sort of hold and squish the fusion fuel around. And these electromagnets allow us to hold the fuel for long enough for the hydrogen to combine into helium and produce fusion energy. Now a spherical tokamak is very similar to a traditional tokamak, except it's much rounder in shape. So where a traditional tokamak is donut shaped inside, mm. a spherical tokamak is much more similar in shape to a cord apple. Now these spherical tokamaks are more compact than a traditional tokamak. They literally take up less space and they're also more efficient. And this allows you to use a weaker magnetic field to achieve the same results. So when you're trying to produce more energy inside your tokamak than your tokamak took to run, it's really useful to not have to run your magnets as hot, basically, not run them as hard. So it gives you a better chance of producing more energy out than energy that went in. So what was their record? Well, on the 10th of March 2022, Tokamak Energy announced that they had reached a plasma temperature of 100 million degrees centigrade inside their spherical tokamak ST40. This means that they managed to heat their fusion fuel to 100 million degrees, which is six times hotter than the center of the sun. And this is a massive achievement. It is the hottest temperature ever reached inside any spherical tokamak and the hottest temperature ever reached inside any privately funded tokamak of any shape, traditional or spherical. Before now, only massive government funded projects like JET in the UK and K-Star in Korea had ever managed to achieve such ridiculous temperatures inside a tokamak. And tokamak energy managed to hold this temperature for a few hundredths of a second. That's about 0.02 to 0.03 seconds, which is no mean feat. And they also managed to do it more than once, which demonstrates they know exactly what they're doing and it wasn't a one-off achievement that they managed to do one time. It's really important for private companies to be able to demonstrate that the machines that they've designed are actually capable of doing fusion. So to do fusion inside a tokamak, you need to meet a range of really specific criteria, a set of specific conditions. And just one of these conditions is temperature. You need to be able to heat your fusion fuel hot enough for it to fuse in the first place to make whatever your byproduct is and fusion energy. And since Tokamak Energy have managed to achieve this, this is one step in their journey towards creating those clean fusion energy power plants. So what does the technological advancement at a private fusion company actually contribute to the world of fusion energy research? Well, it turns out quite a lot. These private companies are perfectly placed to test what we call novel designs. So these are designs which are new and innovative and creative and ultimately more financially risky than a standard design. And here a standard design would be something that we always use, something that we know definitely works. So if you're a government using public money and you want to build a big science experiment, you're probably going to opt for the standard design 
you need a science experiment that is definitely going to make science and lots of science and preferably science for a long time. Otherwise you have to justify building lots of science experiments over a series of years to the public whose money you are spending. And these novel ideas are untested and they don't benefit from the years of experience and development that the standard designs do. But these novel designs can be extremely useful to the field of science. They can turn out to be so useful, so creative, so good, that they actually end up replacing standard designs. So these private companies are able to work a little bit more flexibly. For example, a private company is more likely to build lots of small experiments and work more quickly. So Tokamak Energy built and commissioned, upgraded and deployed ST40, their spherical tokamak, in just under five years. And now that their spherical tokamak has fulfilled its purpose, it's demonstrated that they can reach 100 million degrees, they are building a new tokamak called STHTS which is going to be the first demonstration of using high temperature superconducting HTS magnets to create a strong magnetic field in a tokamak. So this is a potential design for a tokamak that could go into a power plant. And they're able to do that because they're able to create lots of small tokamaks one after the other, each building on the next one, as opposed to being locked into a more traditional design like a government funded body might be. And because they're able to build them so quickly, they can also build them more cheaply. Because their design can be smaller, doesn't have to last as long, and they built it really quick, you're literally paying less because people are spending less time on it, if that makes sense. So these private companies are perfectly placed for testing novel designs, which contribute to the scientific community as a whole. In addition to that, they are also great at bringing in external investment. So whenever a technological advancement is made at a private fusion company, it stimulates interest in the business sector. This then results in more investment in the fusion industry, which means these private companies get bigger, they can expand and develop and hire more people, develop more people and essentially produce the fusion experts of tomorrow. And that is only a good thing in terms of pushing fusion energy forward. And finally, in addition to testing novel designs and stimulating interest in the sector, private fusion companies are able to work alongside big government bodies and each benefits from the other's work. So the government funded bodies benefit from the interest and investment that is generated by the private sector. And the private sector benefits from big government funded schemes like ones at UK AEA that um, develop interest in the sector and develop skills in the sector. Also, whenever a advancement is made in either sector, they then release that information to the scientific community in the form of journals and academic papers. So nothing is really kept a secret in Fusion. Whenever you make some huge advancement, you literally tell everyone about it to prove that you did it well. So a development in fusion research at one company is development in fusion research as a whole. To learn more about Tokamak Energy for this episode, I got in touch with Dr. Hazel Lowe, who is head of laser diagnostics at Tokamak Energy. Diagnostics are essentially sensors that cover tokamaks and all kinds of fusion experiments. And they're able to measure what's happening inside the machine. So without diagnostics, we wouldn't really be able to do fusion because we wouldn't know what was happening at any time. Dr. Lowe's laser diagnostics are able to reach right inside these machines to measure things like temperature and density, which is awesome. Dr. Lowe also contributes to the Fusion Industry Association YouTube channel, which produce fortnightly videos on literally everything that is happening in fusion right now. So I've included a link down below if that sounds interesting to you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like below and subscribe to the channel via the orb. And if you wanna see more videos like this, I have a place for you right here. Bye.